Tome Tampering, a Warlock spell. For three mana, you can shuffle one cost copies of cards in your hand into your deck, then discard your hand. At the moment, in Standard, I think this is easily the worst card in the game. Your payoff is shuffling a bunch of stuff into your deck, so it doesn't do anything immediately, and there's the massive downside of just discarding your entire hand. So you play this, and then you just have nothing, and you just have to hope to top deck your way out of this. And like, at best, you're shuffling nine one-cost cards into your deck, but then you're still going to have, you know, 15 or 20 other cards that aren't discounted, so you're like not even that likely to hit something next turn. I think this card is just awful, unless it gets some sort of support. It's a little bit better in Wild, where you can combine it with, like, Malkazar's Imp, or, like, Fist of Jaraxxus, or Hand of Gul'dan, or something. But until we get some discard synergy, this card is completely unplayable in Standard. And I actually don't even think it's that good with the discard synergies in Wild. Kael'thas Sinstrider, a neutral legendary. 6 mana four seven. Every third minion you play each turn costs 0. So notably, this counts itself, because it is a minion. So you can go Kael'thas, Sinstrider, and then, like, Wisp, and then you can play, you know, Deathwing or whatever. Deathwing, probably not the best choice, but you can play a 10-drop. Or you can wait a little bit, and you can play Kael'thas plus, like, Bran on turn 9. And then you can also play uh, Sire Denathrius, or the Kel'Thuzad for Mage or whatever big powerful battle cry minions there are, and you can get a, uh, a double of that battle cry on turn 9, when normally you wouldn't be able to play a single version of that battle cry until turn 10. So yeah, the potential of this card is very high. Cheating mana tends to be an extremely powerful effect, and this is a card that doesn't really limit how you can cheat mana. It's not like the third, you know, mech you play or whatever. It's just any minion. Any minion in the whole game you can cheat. So there are literally thousands of possibilities with this card. And with that in mind, I think it simply has to be good somewhere. Crixus the Voracious for Demon Hunter, a legendary minion. 4 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. Battlecry, discard your hand. Death Rattle, draw 3 cards. So, I think this card is really, really good. 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven is a lot of stats. You do discard your hand, which sucks a lot. But then Death Rattle, you get probably the same number of cards back. So it breaks even. Um, it is a bit vulnerable to silence. If this gets starfished, it's like... It's kind of a bummer if this gets starfished. But they kind of need to have like a Shadow or Death as well, because this is a 7-7. Seven, seven. And even if they deal with this without letting you draw cards, Demon Hunter has another card coming up that kind of lets you play around that. But maybe more important than all of that is you can just skip the battle cry on this card if you summon it off Razorfin Beastmaster, which summons a Death Rattle minion that costs 4 or less from your hand. So you can play a 3 mana 3-3 three, three, with Death Rattle summon a 7-7 seven, seven, with Death Rattle draw 3 cards. That seems insane. So it's an extremely overstatted minion with two effects that cancel each other out, but there's also plenty of possibility where you don't even have to take the negative effect and you can just have the positive. So I think this card is just really, really strong. Burden of Pride for Warrior. Four mana, summon three 1-3 one, three Jailers with Taunt. If you have 20 or less health, give them plus one, plus one. So summon three 1-3s one, with Taunt, is actually not that bad. It's just a lot of layers that they have to get through. You can kind of compare it to Giggling Inventor, where you summoned a couple of Noiatrons, which overall the stats on those are like pretty pathetic, but it's just so many taunts they have to actually spend time punching through. This is only three bodies. Giggling Inventor was four bodies, but this is cheaper, obviously. And if you have 20 or less health, you can make them all two fours, which is significantly stronger. I think having 20 or less health is actually not that hard as Warrior. Like, yeah, you have armor, which, uh, like, kind of makes it hard to take damage. But you also just have weapons. So you can smack into things and put yourself below 20. And then you can set up for Burden of Pride, clear their thing with a weapon, and then make a bunch of 2-4s. Also, Warrior has a lot of damage-based AoE, like Shield Shatter and Ranker. And a bunch of small minions can really help with that. 
So I think this card is just pretty good. It is possible that it just doesn't quite make the cut in a Control Warrior deck. And this also has anti-synergy with Renathal. But I think it's at least worth considering. I think there's even some possibility that a more aggressive warrior could play this card if they have a bunch of weapons that they can use to uh, knock their health down. Magnifying Glaive for Demon Hunter. 3 mana 2-2 two, two weapon. After your hero attacks, draw until you have 3 cards. Uh, this card is super broken, I'm pretty sure. 3 mana 2-2 two, two weapon that can draw 6 is just insane. It is maybe like a little bit weird to draw six because you like want to be using your hero power, which kind of makes you want to attack every turn, but you don't necessarily want to attack two turns back to back with this card. But I mean, sometimes if it only draws five instead of six or only draws four instead of six, you're probably not that upset. It also leads perfectly into the four mana seven seven we saw earlier. You equip this on three, you play your four mana seven seven, it discards your hand, you hit, draw three cards, and then the 7-7 seven, seven dies and you draw three more cards. So you do all that and you still end up with six cards in your hand. Um, I mean, this card's just insane. Compare it to like Voracious Reader, which was a 1-3 that did the same thing. And this is just, it's just so much better. There's just so little to say about this card other than it's super good. Frenzied Fangs, two mana hunter spell, summon two, two one bats, infuse three, give them plus one plus two so a couple things to note infuse three is pretty much impossible to do on curve unless you like coin double one drop and one of the one drops is the baddie guest that has death rattle summon another minion so it's pretty hard to play two three threes on turn two with this card although not impossible but also summon two two one bats for two mana that's not that bad a lot of the Infuse cards are basically unplayable if they're not Infused. This one's kinda fine. And if you're playing Infuse Hunter, this is a card that wants to be Infused, but it also helps Infuse other cards, because it summons two minions. So I think this card is very reasonable. If you care about Infusing other cards, or if it's easy to Infuse this card, I think you're happy to play it. Topior the Shrubagazor, a Druid Legendary. 7 mana 5-5 five, five dragon with battle cry for the rest of the game after you cast a nature spell summon a 3-3 three, three whelp with rush and the whelps of course are called whelpagazors druid does have a ton of nature spells and they've even gotten some pretty good ones in the set so it seems like it would be pretty easy to get the effect out of this card but i'm just worried that's a little bit slow 7 mana 5-5 five, five is pretty bad, but I guess when you have Wild Growth and Nourish and Guff, you can probably find a turn to play the 7 mana 5-5. Five, five. And getting free 3-3s three with Rush all game is certainly a pretty powerful effect. It does seem like the matchups where you would most want the Rush minions are uh, definitely going to be the faster ones. But even in slower matchups, I mean, we know that Anixia is a really strong minion in Druid. Also, it is relevant that this card is a dragon, because Druid does like to play Kazakasan, and sometimes they have to play some kind of stinky dragons to enable it. So I think this card has a lot of potential. I do think that there is some chance that it's just too slow, but Druid can get to 7 mana pretty fast, and it cares about this effect in multiple ways. So I think there's a decent shot of this seeing play, especially if Druids want to play Prince Renathal. Cecily of the Fey Court, another druid legendary. 8 mana 8-8 eight, eight with taunt and death rattle. Draw a minion, reduce its cost by 8. Wow. Being able to reduce the cost of any minion you want by 8 is pretty ridiculous. That opens up a lot of combos that otherwise wouldn't really be possible. But druid already kind of has that with guff. So I don't know that having access to like Bran plus Denathrius because of this card is really that big of a deal. But even outside of specific combos, I mean, this draws a card and lets you cheat 8 mana. So with that, maybe that would let you play like Anixia and then Bran plus Denathrius in a single turn. Or, you know, sometimes you don't draw Guff and it's nice to get a discount. It can also help you tutor a minion, maybe you specifically only play a handful of them like Malagos or something, this is pretty good for that. 
Uh, this also has very good synergy with the Druid location, Hedge Maze, which triggers a friendly minion's death rattle. So you could potentially discount two minions in your deck by eight mana, which is just an insane amount of mana cheat out of this card. And the upfront body on the card is pretty fine as well. I mean, obviously no one's putting Iron Bark Protector in their deck, but they do play Miracle Growth, which I think is pretty comparable to this in a lot of ways. The one downside of this card is it's not very good if you're drawing into, like, Dozing Kelp Keeper or Jerry Rig Carpenter, or there are actually quite a few small cheap minions that Druid likes to play. But you can build with that in mind, and even if this card whiffs and hits, like, a 2 or 3 mana minion, it's still not that bad. And if you're playing Hedge Maze as well, then you can get multiple activations and it's kind of hard to miss multiple times. So yeah, I think the card is pretty good. But I do think if you want to play a lot of small minions, then uh, this card is not going to fit necessarily in every Druid deck. But definitely some Druid decks will be interested in this. Especially the location builds. Planted Evidence. Another Druid card. One mana nature spell that says discover a spell. It costs two less this turn. So you could play this on, what, turn two? And then if you discover wild growth, you could play it. Play it on turn four and hit a nourish. I guess that's pretty fine, but it's not very consistent. Druid has in the past cared about playing a lot of spells in a turn with like Auctioneer or uh, Mount Seller or the thing that made four twos with Rush. But I don't think really, I don't think any of that really exists at the moment. I guess you can play this with Lady Anaconda. This will cost zero, and the thing you discover might also cost zero. But at the end of the day, you do have to give up a deck slot for this card. And I think you can surely find something better to play than this. Sticking with Druid, we have Plot of Sin. Three mana nature spell that says summon two, two, two trance. Infuse five to five, five ancients instead. So three mana make two, two, twos is pretty bad. Three mana make two five fives is pretty good. So it's really just a matter of how easy is it to infuse this card and how early can you infuse it? Well, it's pretty easy to infuse it with something like Scale of Anixia, but I don't think a Scale of Anixia deck really cares that much about playing three mana for two five fives as strong as it is. That deck can probably just be doing more powerful things with like Naga Giants and the Shrubigazor and celestial alignment and all that kind of stuff so i don't think it makes too much sense there maybe a token druid would be interested in this card but even in token druid infusing five is kind of a lot i guess they have living roots which can make a couple things on turn one but you're pretty much never going to be able to infuse this by turn three so it's definitely more of a later game card but those druid decks do play composting, so they can afford to draw a bunch of cards, they can afford to have one card that's sitting around for a while. And when they're drawing that many cards, it is relevant that this only costs 3 mana after being infused, so you can afford to play it alongside some other stuff. And even if you play it in its base form, it is a nature spell for Herald of Nature. So this card does have a lot going for it in that style of deck, but I am still a little bit worried that it's going to be too slow. And even if it doesn't end up being too slow, Token Druid also still has to be good. So I'm not really sure what to think about this card. It's got a lot going for it, but it's also got a lot going against it. We'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Nightshade Bud for Druid. 8 mana nature spell with choose 1. Discover a minion from your deck to summon. Or spell to cast. So this is 8 mana to cheat out something that's in your deck. That's kind of sketchy, because once you're up to 8 mana, you could just play that card anyway. And this is not a copy, it does play the actual card. So I think you would really only want to be playing this in a combo deck that has specific important cards. Something like Celestial Alignment, or Lady Anaconda. And with those, this starts to look pretty good. And of course in Druid, even if you miss your specific target, you can also hit Miracle Growth. Or, uh, I guess you could never hit Guff with this card, but you could hit Nourish. You could hit Neptalon. There's just a lot of good stuff you could do with this card. I think the most significant application is going to be finding your Celestial Alignment stuff more consistently. Which is just like, wow, why would they ever want to make that easier? But hey, the more consistent that deck gets, 
the more likely it is to be nerfed, right? So that's great. Convoke the Spirits. A 10 mana nature spell for Druid that casts 8 random Druid spells, targets chosen randomly. So this Convoke the Spirits would be pretty good to hit with the Nightshade Bud. But are you going to play Convoke the Spirits? Um, I think maybe you would. Cast 8 random Druid spells, you're pretty likely to hit something like Nightshade Bud. Or Miracle Growth, or Nourish, or Flipper Friends. There's just a ton of big druid spells that are pretty good. I don't think there are very many druid spells that would like clear your own board or something ridiculous like that. Also not that many that would clear the opponent's board, but maybe you hit scale of Anixia or something. Uh, you just compare this to Rune of the Archmage, which is a playable card. This probably is going to cast more mana worth of stuff than Rune of the Archmage, although that those spells are going to be less likely to clear the board probably. And maybe that's a problem with this card. Maybe it's casting too many Powers of the Wild and stuff like that to buff a board and not enough stuff to deal with the opponent's stuff. But this is also a 10 mana card in Druid, so you can play this on like turn 6 or something. There is only so much big stuff you can play in Druid though, even with all the nourishes and guffs and stuff. But I think you're definitely going to at least consider playing this card. 